A frigate is any of several types of warship, the term having been used for ships of various sizes and roles over the last few centuries. In the 17th century, the term was used for any warship built for speed and maneuverability, the description often used being frigate built. These could be warships carrying their principal battery of carriage mounted guns on a single deck or on two decks. The term was generally used for ships too small to stand in the line of battle, although early line of battle ships were frequently referred to as frigates when they were built for speed. In the 18th century, the term referred to ships which were usually as long as a ship of the line and were square rigged on all three masts, but were faster and with lighter armament, used for patrolling and escort. In the definition adopted by the British Admiralty, they were rated ships of at least 28 guns, carrying their principal armament upon a single continuous deck a euro the upper deck, while ships of the line possessed two or more continuous decks bearing batteries of guns. In the late 19th century, the armoured frigate was a type of ironclad warship which for a time was the most powerful type of vessel afloat. The term frigate was used because such ships still mounted their principal armament on a single continuous upper deck. The later 19th century battleship thus developed from the frigate rather than from the ship of the line. In modern navies, frigates are used to protect other warships and merchant marine ships, especially as anti-submarine warfare combatants for amphibious expeditionary forces, underway replenishment groups, and merchant convoys. Ship classes dubbed frigates have also more closely resembled corvettes, destroyers, cruisers and even battleships. The rank frigate captain derives from the name of this type of ship. Age of sail, origins. The term frigate originated in the Mediterranean in the late 15th century, referring to a lighter galleys type ship with oars, sails and a light armament, built for speed and maneuverability. The etymology of the word is unknown although it may have originated as a corruption of Afractus, a Latin word for an open vessel with no lower deck. Afractus was, in turn, derived from the ancient Greek phrase a one quarter iii plus or minus iiii one half i plus or minus a, or undefended ship. In 1583, during the Eighty Years' War, Habsburg Spain recovered the southern Netherlands from the rebellious Dutch. This soon led to the occupied ports being used as bases for privateers, the Dunkirkers, to attack the shipping of the Dutch and their allies. To achieve this they developed small, maneuverable, sail-only vessels that came to be referred to as frigates. The success of these Dunkirker vessels influenced the ship design of the Dutch and other navies contending with them but because most regular navies required ships of greater endurance than the Dunkirker frigates could provide, the term was soon applied less exclusively to any relatively fast and elegant sail-only warship. In French, the term frigate became a verb, meaning to build long and low, and an adjective, adding further confusion. Even the huge English sovereign of the seas could be described as a delicate frigate by a contemporary after her upper decks were reduced in 1651. The Navy of the Dutch Republic was the first navy to build the larger ocean-going frigates. The Dutch Navy had three principal tasks in the struggle against Spain, to protect Dutch merchant ships at sea, to blockade the ports of Spanish-held Flanders to damage trade and halt enemy privateering, and to fight the Spanish fleet and prevent troop landings. The first two tasks required speed, shallowness of draft for the shallow waters around the Netherlands, and the ability to carry sufficient supplies to maintain a blockade. The third task required heavy armament, sufficient to fight against the Spanish fleet. The first of these larger battle-capable frigates were built around 1600 at Horn in Holland. By the later stages of the Eighty Years' War the Dutch had switched entirely from the heavier ships still used by the English and Spanish to the lighter frigates, carrying around 40 a guns and weighing around 300 a tons. The effectiveness of the Dutch frigates became most visible in the Battle of the Downs in 1639, encouraging most other navies, especially the English, to adopt similar designs. The fleets built by the Commonwealth of England in the 1650s generally consisted of ships described as frigates, the largest of which were two-decker great frigates of the third rate. Carrying 60 a guns, these vessels were as big and capable as great ships of the time. However, most other frigates at the time were used as cruisers independent fast ships. The term frigate implied a long-hull design, 
which relates directly to speed and also, in turn, helped the development of the broadside tactic in naval warfare. At this time, a further design evolved, reintroducing oars to create the galley frigate such as HMSA Charles Galley of 1676 which was rated as a 32-gun fifth rate but also had a bank of 40 oars set below the upper deck which could be used to propel the ship in the absence of a favorable wind. In Danish, the word frigat is often applied to warships carrying as few as 16 guns, such as HMSA Falcon which the British classified as a sloop. Under the rating system of the Royal Navy, by the middle of the 18th century, the term frigate was technically restricted to single-decked ships of the fifth rate, though small 28-gun frigates were classed as sixth rate. Classic Design The classic sailing frigate, well known today for its role in the Napoleonic Wars, can be traced back to French developments in the second quarter of the 18th century. The French built Mar Copyright Dow Copyright E of 1740 is often regarded as the first example of this type. These ships were square rigged and carried all their main guns on a single continuous upper deck. The lower deck, known as the gun deck, now carried no armament, and functioned as a berth deck, where the crew lived, and was in fact placed below the waterline of the new frigates. The new sailing frigates were able to fight with all their guns when the seas were so rough that comparable two-deckers had to close the gun ports on their lower decks. Like the larger 74 which was developed at the same time, the new frigates sailed very well and were good fighting vessels due to a combination of long hulls and low upperworks compared to vessels of comparable size and firepower. The Royal Navy captured a handful of the new French frigates during the War of the Austrian Succession and were impressed by them particularly for their inshore handling capabilities. They soon built copies and started to adapt the type to their own needs, setting the standard for other frigates as the leading naval power. The first British frigates carried 28 guns including an upper deck battery of 24 9-pounder guns but soon developed into fifth-rate ships of 32 or 36 guns including an upper deck battery of 26 12-pounder guns with the remaining six or ten smaller guns carried on the quarter deck and forecastle. From around 1778, a larger heavy frigate was developed with a main battery of 26 or 28 18-pounder guns. Frigates did not carry any guns on their lower decks. Confusingly, the lower deck was often referred to as the gun deck in the British Royal Navy, even for frigates, where it did not carry any guns or have gun ports. Both types could additionally carry smaller carriage-mounted guns on their quarter-decks and forecastles. Technically, rated ships with fewer than 28 guns could not be classed as frigates but as post-ships. However, in common parlance most post-ships were often described as frigates, the same casual misuse of the term being extended to smaller two-decked ships that were too small to stand in the line of battle. Royal Navy frigates of the late 18th century included the 1780 Vintage Perseverance class, which measured around 900 tons burthen and carried 36 guns. This successful class was followed by numerous other classes that measured over 1,000 tons burthen and carried 38 guns. In 1797, three of the United States Navy's first six major ships were rated as 44-gun frigates which operationally carried 56 to 60 24-pounder long guns and 32-pounder or 42-pounder carronades on two decks. By all regards they were exceptionally powerful and tough. These ships were so well armed that they were often regarded as equal to ships of the line, and after a series of losses at the outbreak of the War of 1812, Royal Navy fighting instructions ordered British frigates to never engage American frigates at any less than a 2-1 advantage. USA Constitution, preserved as a museum ship by the U.S. Navy, is the oldest commissioned warship afloat, and is a surviving example of a frigate from the age of sail. Constitution and her sister ships President and United States were created in a response to deal with the Barbary Coast pirates and in conjunction with the Naval Act of 1794. The three big frigates, when built, had a distinctive building pattern which minimized hogging and improves hydrodynamic efficiency. The hull was designed so that all the weight from the guns was upon the keel itself. Joshua Humphreys proposed that only live oak, a tree that grew only in America, should be used to build these ships. The method was to use diagonal riders, eight on each side that sat a 45-degree angle. 
These beams of live oak were about two feet wide and around a foot thick and helped to maintain the shape of the hull, serving also to reduce flexibility and to minimize impacts. These ideas were considered revolutionary in the late 18th and early 19th century. A three-layer method was used in which the planks along the sides of the hull were laid horizontally across the ribs, making a crossing or checkerboard pattern. The sides of the ship could be as thick as 25 inches, and were able to absorb substantial damage. The strength of this braced construction and USS Constitution the nickname Old Ironsides. Roll. Frigates were perhaps the hardest worked of warship types during the age of sail. While smaller than a ship of the line, they were formidable opponents for the large numbers of sloops and gunboats, not to mention privateers or merchantmen. Able to carry six months' stores, they had very long range. And vessels larger than frigates were considered too valuable to operate independently. Frigates scouted for the fleet, went on commerce raiding missions and patrols, and conveyed messages and dignitaries. Usually, frigates would fight in small numbers or singly against other frigates. They would avoid contact with ships of the line. Even in the midst of a fleet engagement, it was bad etiquette for a ship of the line to fire on an enemy frigate which had not fired first. Frigates were involved in fleet battles, often as repeating frigates. In the smoke and confusion of battle, signals made by the fleet commander, whose flagship might be in the thick of the fighting, might be missed by the other ships of the fleet. Frigates were therefore stationed to windward or leeward of the main line of battle, and had to maintain a clear line of sight to the commander's flagship. Signals from the flagship were then repeated by the frigates, which themselves standing out of the line and clear from the smoke and disorder of battle, could be more easily seen by the other ships of the fleet. If damage or loss of masts prevented the flagship from making clear conventional signals, the repeating frigates could interpret them and hoist their own in the correct manner, passing on the commander's instructions clearly. For officers in the Royal Navy, a frigate was a desirable posting. Frigates often saw action, which meant a greater chance of glory, promotion, and prize money. Unlike larger ships that were placed in ordinary, frigates were kept in service in peacetime as a cost-saving measure and to provide experience to frigate captains and officers which would be useful in wartime. Frigates could also carry marines for boarding enemy ships or for operations on shore. In 1832, the frigate Asa Potomac landed a party of 282 sailors and marines ashore in the U.S. Navy's first Sumatran expedition. Common armament was one gun deck with 32 to 44 long guns, from 8 to 24 pounders, plus a few carronades. Frigates remained a crucial element of navies until the mid 19th century. The first ironclads were classified as frigates, because of the number of guns they carried. However, terminology changed as iron and steam became the norm, and the role of the frigate was assumed first by the protected cruiser and then by the light cruiser. Frigates are often the vessel of choice in historical naval novels due to their relative freedom compared to ships of the line and smaller vessels. For example the Patrick O'Brien Aubrey Euro Maturin series, C.S. Forrester's Horatio Hornblower series and Alexander Kent's Richard Bolliter series. The motion picture Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World features a reconstructed historic frigate, HMS Rose, to depict Aubrey's frigate HMS Surprise. Preservation and Replication, two British sailing frigates, both of the leader class, are preserved, HMSA Trincomalee in Hartlepool and HMSA Unicorn in Dundee. On display in Boston, is the Asa Constitution. Launched in 1797, she is one of the original six frigates of the United States Navy. As a commissioned USN vessel, she is afloat and maintained in superb condition by her crew. In 1997, a project to rebuild a famous French frigate was able to lay the keel in a dry dock in Rochefort. The frigate Herman was the ship that carried Lafayette to the U.S. during the American Revolutionary War. The original Herman was sunk in 1793 off the French coast, and her wreck was rediscovered in 1992. Fortunately, the British had captured her sister ship in the Napoleonic Wars and had recorded her construction in great detail, which documents were then available for the reconstruction. The replica is faithful in almost every way to the original.
the ship is 56 meters long and carries 26 12-pounder guns. The project site contains many very interesting photos of her construction, a site for the book to accompany her build and launch gives some summary details. Replica frigates have been used in a number of films, these include The Grand Turk, playing HMS Indefatigable in the 1999 Iron Gruffard TV series Hornblower. Also replica frigate HMS Rose playing HMS Surprise in the 2003 Russell Crowe film Master and Commander, and also HMS Providence in the 2011 Johnny Depp film Pirates of the Caribbean, on Stranger Tides. Age of Steam Vessels classed as frigates continued to play a great role in navies with the adoption of steam power in the 19th century. In the 1830s, navies experimented with large paddle steamers equipped with large guns mounted on one deck, which were termed paddle frigates. From the mid-1840s on, frigates which more closely resembled the traditional sailing frigate were built with steam engines and screw propellers. These screw frigates, built first of wood and later of iron, continued to perform the traditional role of the frigate until late in the 19th century. Armoured frigate, from 1859, Armour was added to ships based on existing frigate and ship of the line designs. The additional weight of the armour on these first ironclad warships meant that they could have only one gun deck, and they were technically frigates, even though they were more powerful than existing ships of the line and occupied the same strategic role. The phrase armoured frigate remained in use for some time to denote a sail equipped, broadside firing type of ironclad. After 1875, the term frigate fell out of use. Vessels with armoured sides were designated as battleships, or armoured cruisers, while protected cruisers only possessed an armoured deck, and unarmoured vessels, including frigates and sloops, were classified as unprotected cruisers. In preservation, on display in Portsmouth is HMSA Warrior, built in 1860. Warrior, constructed of wrought iron, was the world a Euro unregistered trademark's first iron hulled, armoured warship powered by steam as well as sail. She and her sister ship, HMSA Black Prince, were the sole members of the Warrior class ironclads, Queen Victoria's Black Battle Fleet. Warrior was used for 50 years as an oil jetty at Milford Haven before being restored to her former glory. On display in a Beltoft, Denmark is the Danish steam frigate Jland launched in 1860. Second World War. Modern frigates are related to earlier frigates only by name. The term frigate was re-adopted during the Second World War by the Royal Navy to describe an anti-submarine escort vessel that was larger than a corvette, smaller than a destroyer, and about equal in size and capability to the American destroyer escort. Anti-submarine escorts had previously been classified as sloops by the Royal Navy, and the Black Swan class sloops of 1939 Euro 1945 were as large as the new types of frigate, and more heavily armed. Twenty-two of these were reclassified as frigates after the war, as were the remaining 24 smaller castle class corvettes. The frigate was introduced to remedy some of the shortcomings inherent in the corvette design, limited armament, a hull form not suited to open ocean work, a single shaft which limited speed and maneuverability and a lack of range. The frigate was designed and built to the same mercantile construction standards as the Corvette, allowing manufacture by yards unused to warship construction. The first frigates of the river class were essentially two sets of Corvette machinery in one larger hull, armed with the latest Hedgehog anti-submarine weapon. The frigate possessed less offensive firepower and speed than a destroyer, but such qualities were not required for anti-submarine warfare. Submarines were slow while submerged, and Aztec sets did not operate effectively at speeds of over 20 knots. Rather, the frigate was an austere and weatherly vessel suitable for mass construction and fitted with the latest innovations in anti-submarine warfare. As the frigate was intended purely for convoy duties, and not to deploy with a fleet, it had limited range and speed. The contemporary German Flitten Beaglitter, also known as F-boats were essentially frigates. They were based on a pre-war Opel Commando d'Air Marine concept of vessels which could fill roles such as fast minesweeper, mine layer, merchant escort and anti-submarine vessel. Because of the Treaty of Versailles their displacement was officially limited to 600 tons, 
although in reality they exceeded this by about 100 tons. F boats had two stacks and two 105 mm gun turrets. The design was flawed because of its narrow beam, sharp bow, and unreliable high pressure steam turbines. F boats were succeeded in operational duties by Type 35 and Elbing class torpedo boats. Flat 10 B glitter remained in service as advanced training vessels. It was not until the Royal Navy's Bay class of 1944 that a British design classified as a frigate was produced for fleet use, although it still suffered from limited speed. These anti-aircraft frigates, built on incomplete lock class frigate hulls, were similar to the United States Navy's destroyer escorts, although the latter had greater speed and offensive armament to better suit them to fleet deployments. The destroyer escort concept came from design studies by the General Board of the United States Navy in 1940, as modified by requirements established by a British commission in 1941 prior to the American entry into the war, for deep water escorts. The American built destroyer escorts serving in the British Royal Navy were rated as Captain class frigates. The U.S. Navy's two Canadian built Asheville class and 96 British influenced. American-built Tacoma-class frigates that followed originally were classified as patrol gunboats in the U.S. Navy but on April 15, 1943 were all reclassified as patrol frigates. In preservation and in fiction, on display in Brisbane, Australia as Marsa Diamantina, the last complete river-class frigate, preserved at the Queensland Maritime Museum. The river-class frigate HMCS A Stormont served as a convoy escort during the Battle of the Atlantic and was present at the D-Day landings. In 1947, Greek ship owner Aristotle Onassis purchased her for scrap value and converted her into a luxurious superyacht named Christina O, after his daughter. The vessel is now owned by John Paul Nicolau, who lets the yacht for elite charters and cruises. HMS Saltash was a fictional river-class frigate in Nicholas Monsarrat's 1951 book, The Cruel Sea, HMCSA New Glasgow plays the fictional frigate HMS Rockhampton in the 1955 John Wayne film The Sea Chase, HMS Troutbridge was the fictional RN frigate which was the weekly setting for the BBC radio comedy programme The Navy Lark which ran on the BBC's light programme from 1959 to 1977. Moored on the Thames Embankment in London are two surviving Royal Navy anti-submarine sloops, which are the predecessors of the WW2 frigates, HMSA President, built as HMS Saxifrage in 1918, is a flower-class anti-submarine Q-ship, and is one of the last three surviving warships of the Royal Navy built during the First World War. President was one of the first types of warship built specifically for anti-submarine warfare. HMSA Wellington a 1930 Grimsby-class sloop, is moored nearby, and represents the subsequent type of anti-submarine vessel. These were the precursors of the Black Swan-class sloops of 1939, later reclassified as frigates. Wellington and President together represent the first and second generation ancestors of modern frigates, which are the most numerous type of frontline warship in today's Navy. Contemporary, Guided Missile Role the introduction of the surface-to-air missile after the Second World War made relatively small ships effective for anti-aircraft warfare, the guided missile frigate. In the USN, these vessels were called ocean escorts, and designated D, e, or DEG until 1975 a Euro a holdover from the Second World War destroyer escort or DE. The British Royal Navy maintained the use of the term frigate. Likewise, the French Navy refers to missile-equipped ship up to cruiser-sized ships, by the name of Fra Copyright Gate, while smaller units are named Aviso. Soviet Navy used the term guard ship. From the 1950s to the 1970s, the United States Navy commissioned ships classed as guided missile frigates which were actually anti-aircraft warfare cruisers built on destroyer-style hulls. Some of these ships are Euro the Bainbridge, Truxton, California and Virginia class Caesar Euro were nuclear-powered. These frigates were roughly midway in size between cruisers and destroyers. This was similar to the use of the term frigate during the Age of Sail during which it referred to a medium-sized warship, but it was inconsistent with conventions used by other contemporary navies which regarded frigates as being smaller than destroyers. During the 1975 ship reclassification, 
the large American frigates were redesignated as cruisers or destroyers, while ocean escorts were renamed as frigates. One of the most successful post-1945 designs was the British Leander-class frigate, which was used by several navies. Laid down in 1959, the Leanders were based on the previous Type 12 anti-submarine frigate but equipped for anti-aircraft use as well. They were used by the UK into the 1990s, at which point some were sold on to other navies. The Leander design, or improved versions of it, were license-built for other navies. Nearly all modern frigates are equipped with some form of offensive or defensive missiles, and as such are rated as guided missile frigates. Improvements in surface-to-air missiles allow modern guided missile frigates to form the core of many modern navies and to be used as a fleet defense platform, without the need for specialized anti-air warfare frigates. Other uses, the Royal Navy Type 61 Salisbury class were air direction frigates equipped to track aircraft. To this end they had reduced armament compared to the Type 41 Leopard class air defense frigates built on the same hull. Multi-role frigates like MEKO 200, ANZAC class frigate and Halifax class frigate are designed for navies needing warships deployed in a variety of situations that a general frigate class would not be able to fulfill and not requiring the need for deploying destroyers. Anti-submarine role. At the opposite end of the spectrum, some frigates are specialized for anti-submarine warfare. Increasing submarine speeds towards the end of the Second World War greatly reduced the margin of speed superiority of frigate over submarine. The frigate could no longer be slow and powered by mercantile machinery and consequently post-war frigates, such as the Whitby class, were faster. Such ships carry improved sonar equipment, such as the variable depth sonar or towed array, and specialized weapons such as torpedoes. Ford throwing weapons such as Limbo and missile carried anti submarine torpedoes such as ASROC or Akara. Surface to air missiles such as Sea Sparrow and surface to surface missiles such as Exocet give them defensive and offensive capabilities. The Royal Navy's original Type 22 frigate is an example of a specialized anti submarine warfare frigate. Especially for anti submarine warfare. Most modern frigates have a landing deck and hangar aft to operate helicopters, eliminating the need for the frigate to close with unknown subsurface threats, and using fast helicopters to attack nuclear submarines which may be faster than surface warships. For this task the helicopter is equipped with sensors such as sonoboys, wire-mounted dipping sonar and magnetic anomaly detectors to identify possible threats, and torpedoes or depth charges to attack them. With then board radar helicopters can also be used to reconnoiter over the horizon targets and, if equipped with anti-ship missiles such as Penguin or Sea Skewer, to attack them. The helicopter is also invaluable for search and rescue operation and has largely replaced the use of small boats or the jackstay rig for such duties as transferring personnel, mail and cargo between ships or to shore. With helicopters these tasks can be accomplished faster and less dangerously, and without the need for the frigate to slow down or change course. Further developments Stealth technology has been introduced in modern frigate design. Frigate shapes are designed to offer a minimal radar cross-section, which also lends them good air penetration. The maneuverability of these frigates has been compared to that of sailing ships. Examples are the French Lafayette class with the Asta-15 missile for anti-missile capabilities, the German F-125 class and Sachsen class frigates, the Turkish TF-2000 type frigates with the Mk-41 BLS, and the Indian Shivalik class frigate and Talwar class frigate with a BrahMos missile system. The modern French Navy applies the term first class frigate and second class frigate to both destroyers and frigates in service. Pennant numbers remain divided between F-series numbers for those ships internationally recognized as frigates and D-series pennant numbers for those more traditionally recognized as destroyers. This can result in some confusion as certain classes are referred to as frigates in French service while similar ships in other navies are referred to as destroyers. This also results in some recent classes of French ships being among the largest in the world to carry the rating of frigate. In the German Navy, frigates were used to replace aging destroyers. However in size and role the new German frigates exceed the former class of destroyers. 
the future German F-125 class frigate will be the largest class of frigates worldwide with a displacement of more than 7,200 tons. The same was done in the Spanish Navy, which went ahead with the deployment of the first Aegis frigates, the ALV Aero de Baza N class frigates. Littoral combat ship some new classes of ships similar to corvettes are optimized for high-speed deployment and combat with small craft rather than combat between equal opponents. An example is the U.S. littoral combat ship. By 2019, all Oliver Hazard Perry class frigates in the United States Navy were to be replaced by the LCS. While the LCS class ships are smaller than the frigate class they will replace, they offer a similar degree of weaponry while requiring less than half the crew complement and offering a top speed of over 40 knots. A major advantage for the LCS chips is that they are designed around specific mission modules allowing them to fulfill a variety of roles. The modular system also allows for most upgrades to be performed ashore and installed later into the ship, keeping the ships available for deployment for the maximum time. The latest U.S. deactivation plans will retire all Oliver Hazard Perry class frigates by October 2015, which will be the first time that the U.S. Navy has been without a frigate class of ships since 1943. See also, List of frigate classes, List of frigate classes by country, United States Navy 1975 ship reclassification, lists. Note that Algerian Tripolitan and Tunisian sail frigates are listed under Turkey. All Italian city-state frigates are listed under Italy. References, Notes Bibliography, Bennett, G. The Battle of Trafalgar, Barnsley. ISBN 1-84415-107-7, Kinstam, Angus and Bryan, Tony, British Napoleonic Ship of the Line, Osprey Publishing. 18417630x Gardner, Robert and Lambert, Andrew Steam, Steel and Shellfire, The Steam Warship, 1815 Euro 1905, Book Sales, Gresham, John D. The Swift and Sure Steeds of the Fighting Sail Fleet Were Its Dashing Frigates, Military Heritage Magazine. Roger, N. A. M. The Command of the Ocean, A Naval History of Britain 1649 Euro 1815, London. ISBN 0-7139-9411-8, Lambert, Andrew Battleships in Transition, The Creation of the Steam Battlefleet 1815 Euro 1860, published Conway Maritime Press. ISBN 0-85177-315-X, Lavery, Brian Nelson's Navy, The Ships. Men and Organization 1793 Euro 1815. Annapolis Maryland Naval Institute Press. ISBN 1-59114-611-9. Lavery, Brian The Ship of the Line, Volume 1, The Development of the Battlefleet, 1650 Euro 1850. Annapolis Maryland Naval Institute Press. ISBN 0-87021-631-7. Lavery, Brian. The Ship of the Line, Volume 2, Design, Construction and Fittings. Annapolis Maryland Naval Institute Press, ISBN 0-87021-953-7. Mullen, A.T. The Influence of Sea Power Upon History 1660 Euro 1783. Cosimo, Inc., Marriott, Leo. Royal Navy Frigates 1945 Euro 1983, Ian Allen, 1983, ISBN 0-7110-1322-5, Macfar Kaha, Colin and Glerick, George, Encyclopedia Britannica, or, A Dictionary of Arts, Sciences, and Miscellaneous Literature, London, Volume 17, Third Edition. Roger, N. A. M. The Command of the Ocean, A Naval History of Britain 1649 Euro 1815, London. ISBN 0 7139 8 Sundhorse, L. Naval Warfare, 1815 Euro 1914, Winfield, Riff. The Fifty Gun Ship. London, Caxton Editions. ISBN 1-84067-365-6, 
ISBN 1-86176-025-6, Lavery, B. Ship, Dawling Kindersley, Ltd. ISBN 1-4053-1154-1, External links, frigates from battleships-cruises.co.uk A Euro history and pictures of United Kingdom frigates since World War II. Frigates from Destroyers Online A Euro Pictures, History, Crews of United States Frigates Since 1963, The Development of the Full Rigged Ship from the Carrack to the Full Rigger